It's a new season, a new day, a season of settlement. God is advancing His kingdom through transformation, restoration, inspiration, and assurance of hope through faith. We invite you to be a part of this new season. So join us for our weekly services every Wednesday for Word on Wednesday Bible Study at 6.30 p.m., Sunday for Empowerment Worship Service at 10.30 a.m., and Prayer Vigil every last Friday at 10 p.m. We can't wait for you to experience God through faith. This is your season of settlement. We are in full expectation that God will establish and settle you in this season. put our declaration on the board and I want everybody to say this declaring this in power hallelujah declaring this because you believe it the Bible says if you will confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart it shall happen to you so one two three let's go I confess I am a living walking breathing testimony in Christ Jesus I confess life and not death victory and not defeat I will overcome, I will finish, and I will thrive by the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. Let's do that again because I did not hear you. Hallelujah. One, two, three. Let's go again. I confess I am a living, walking, breathing testimony in Christ Jesus. I confess life and not death, victory and not defeat. I will overcome, I will finish. And I will thrive by the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As we invite our senior pastor to come up. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, put your hands together for Jesus, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, we want to give you praise. We want to give you adoration. Thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Without you, God, we can do nothing. Let your presence take absolute control in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that, oh God, your will will be perfected in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for who you are in our lives. We know this morning, you again, oh God, will teach us. You will again, oh God, will lead us. We know this morning, we are walking out of this place with a wonderful word. Prepare our heart to receive from you in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. And thank mommy and daddy in the presence of the Lord. It's always good to see you in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell somebody you are walking out of this place with a miracle. Say like you mean it. Say you are walking out of this place with a miracle. Say you are walking out of this place with a miracle. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that? You are walking out of this place with a miracle. There are festivals of miracle coming your way. God is making ways for you. And we know that you will never be the same in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, I want to present to us briefly before we leave and go to our various homes. I entitled this sermon this morning, The Focus for a New Beginning. So somebody, The Focus for a New Beginning. The focus for a new beginning. I was just looking at some of the things that we have gone through already last week, Sunday, and the Wednesday. And if you have not listened to the Bible studies on Wednesday, I would like you to go back to listen to that. And if you have not listened to the message last Sunday, please go on the YouTube and listen to it, and the Lord will be of a blessing to you. Amen. But when we talk about the focus, I was actually, you know, going through the scriptures and you know, putting some things together. And I said, what is it that the Lord wants me to minister to the people today? And then, and then he gave me a word. He said, that, give, him, give them the focus for the, a new beginning. The focus. You are focusing. Now, when you have a focus on something, your attention is fixed on something. Amen. Your mind is fixed on something. Your mind is fixed on the new beginning. 
and what are some of the things that we need to do or we need to focus on in order to move in that area of what? New beginning. Ah, I have Sister Modina also in the house. Let's put our hands together for Sister Modina. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, your baby is born on uh, February, right? On the Valentine's Day, right? So together with uh, Brother Hassan, you know, the two of you have the same baby on the Valentine's Day. May the Lord bless the two of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome back home. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. And so, what are some of the things that we want to focus on? What are some of the things that we want to look at? You know, how can we focus on these things and make a new beginning? And uh, I know that sometimes in our lives, you know, we have a new beginning with God. And then sometimes, uh, that all things that have done or had happened in our life have passed away. We didn't take too much of those things. We are moving forward. We are progressing in the name of the Lord. And so if you want to compare the things that have happened in your life, at times you ask yourself, you know, what is it that I have done? Maybe I have failed God. Or maybe you have not been on that path that God has called you to be. And things have become a struggle for you. And so how can you leave that particular area to come to a place where you can meet with God? And today I want us to go to the book of Ezra, the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse number 1. Now, we're going to look at that story, and I want to give you a little bit of background. Hallelujah. Let me give you a little bit of background so you will understand what we are going. The nation of Israel was about spiritually low as, you, as they can go. So, the northern kingdom had fallen. The northern kingdom of the nation of Israel has fallen to the Assyrians. And then after, that is after, you know, before, uh, how do you call it, 722 before the, the birth of Christ, it has fallen. And then the history also continued because of the idolatry. And the Bible talks about the sun. There are two kingdoms. We have the northern kingdom and we have the southern kingdom. And so we are looking at the northern kingdom. What was that? It was Nebuchadnezzar that went in to destroy that kingdom, Jerusalem and Judah. And we are looking at that and the temple was destroyed. That temple, so let's go to Ezra chapter 1 and look at a story, a little bit of introduction there. And then we could go to verse number, uh, chapter 3 also. Amen. Ezra chapter 1, verse number 1. Ezra chapter 1, verse number 1. You know where that is in your Bible, right? You can find it, right? If you find it, say, Amen. If you haven't found it, say, Oh, me. We don't have oh, me in the house. Hallelujah. So now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The word of the Lord might be fulfilled. That the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, so God has given a message and instead of the spirit of what? The king of Cyrus. That he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. Saying, what is, what, what is he saying? Thou sayest Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdom of the earth. And he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord came and that, what, that is what happened. Now this is the time we are going to look at what had happened in Jerusalem. How the children of Israel that were in captivity in Babylon, you know, for 50 to 70 years, how they are going to leave that place and go to that Jerusalem. Why? Mainly because the Lord has given a word that these people must leave and go to that place. And this Cyrus has decided, you know, let's go to verse number two. The Bible says, and when the seventh man, somebody said the seventh man, the seventh man was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. They gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. They were all together. They were living. They said, no, it is now time for us to go. That means that all the desolate places, all that which they have found in Jerusalem, something is going to happen there. In verse, go ahead. In verse number said, Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetael, and his brethren, and built the altar of God. Of Israel to offer a burnt offering thereon as it is written in the law of the man, Moses, the man of God. So what is happening is that we have seen some progression over here. The people are leaving that place, going to Jerusalem. And the first thing they did was that when they got to Jerusalem, the foundation was not yet built even. 
And the first thing that they did was to build an altar. Are you hearing me? To build an altar. And that altar is for burnt offering, for the sacrifice for the Lord. Now, what we are looking into this morning is that, you know, you ask yourself that if at all, new beginning is possible in your life. And I am here to tell you, new beginning is possible. Tell somebody, new beginning is possible. Number one, new beginning is possible. New beginning is possible. It is possible for you. Because whatever has been destroyed in your life, what has been the challenge in your life, the Lord is calling you to a new place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is calling, God is calling you to arise from the old destroyed place, the, the struggle place. God is saying, oh, it doesn't matter whether the building has been ruined. It doesn't matter whether there are rubbles over there. It doesn't matter whether there are chaos in your life. But God is calling you to rise up and build for him. Can I hear a louder amen? You must rise up and build for him. Forget about the past. Forget about the destruction. Forget about what has happened in your life. The Lord said, no, you must get to that place and build. So, new beginning is possible for you. With Jesus, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Can I hear a louder, vibrant amen? amen. Let your amen not be the epileptic amen, but let it be a born again amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for that big amen. It's verse number three. Look at what happened. Verse number three. In verse number three of that particular scripture. Ezra 3.3. 3. And they set the altar upon his basis. For fear was upon them because of the people. Because of the people of those countries. There were enemies around. There were people after they left that place. They were in captivity. There were some people already occupying that place. So they went in there because of the fear of the people. They offered those ones. And they offered burnt offering thereon unto the Lord. Even burnt offering morning and evening. Someone say morning and evening. The burnt offering was not only in the morning. But it was also in the evening. That means that whatever altar they have raised. Is an altar of prayer for the Lord. That, that means to tell you that it doesn't matter what had happened. It doesn't matter what was going on. But God has given them the power. He has given them the strength to even stand on their feet to offer, how do you call it, offering unto him. That means that in your life, when things are going on, don't forget about prayer. Do, tell somebody, do not forget about prayer. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Hallelujah. So new beginning is possible no matter how spiritually low you have gone. New beginning is possible in your life. The first thing they did, I believe, they would have been thinking like, okay, before we build the, 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 the temple or build the house for the Lord, let's, let's look at the foundation. Do you know what that means? That people were in exile, they were in captivity for a long time. Now, there were children over there, there were children who were born in that captivity. There were elderly people in there. I believe the elderly, the elderly people were thinking about, oh, we have grown and we are growing right now. And as they were thinking about the growth of their life, the children were just rejoicing. Are you hearing me? They were rejoicing because they see a new hope entry into them. They see a new future entry into them. Amen. And so I want to tell you that the new beginning is possible. New beginning is possible. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter, chapter 33. Verse number 10 to 11. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse number 10 to 11. Now, it was almost about 50,000 Jews responded when they were asked that, no, you are going to leave Babylon and go to Jerusalem. All of them responded. Why? Look at it. Thou sayest the Lord again, there shall be head in this place, which ye shall be what? Desolate without man and without beast. And even in the cities of Judah and in the street of Jerusalem, there are what? That are desolate without man and without what? Inhabitant and without what? Beast. Go ahead. Without beast. The voice of joy. Somebody say the voice of joy. Even in the midst of that struggle, in the midst of their desolation, there was the voice of joy. I pray for you in the month of new beginning. May you find joy in the Lord. Your amens are not last. May you find joy in the Lord. Shout and say, I receive joy. May you find joy in the Lord. The Bible says the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of what? Bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts for the Lord is good 
for his mercy endureth forever. And, and of them that shall bring what? The sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land. And at that first, thou say the Lord. Amen. As you enter into the house of the Lord, sometimes when you have, any time you come to the house of the Lord, let your heart rejoice. Let your spirit man rejoice. There is nothing that the enemy can hold you down with. Because Jesus has won the prize for you on the cross of Calvary. Tell somebody you are more than victorious. Hallelujah. So you must have that voice of joy. You must praise God at every time. Now you have to also understand number two. What are we going to focus on number two? New beginnings with God must focus on the cross of Jesus Christ. He must what? Focus on the cross of Jesus Christ. Why am I saying that? Because he is the finisher and the author of our faith. Amen. Jesus is our, our, our role model. Jesus is our leader. Jesus is the one we are looking at. So you have to you know, focus on the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, the first thing that the leaders, that is Zerubbabel and Joshua, and they did when they, when they went to the rubble place was that they were, exact, they were so excited. Go to verse number 6 of that scripture. Verse number 6 of the, how they call it, the Ezra chapter 3. Now look at what it is. Verse number 6 of Ezra chapter 3, verse number 6. Go there and look at what has happened. They were so excited from the first day of the seven man. Began they to offer burnt offering unto the Lord. But the foundation of the table of the Lord was not yet laid. Are you hearing me? I believe if you want to build a building, you are thinking about the foundation. But the people were thinking about a place of worship for the Lord. Even before the foundation. May you find an altar in your life. May the altar of God in your life be strong. Are you hearing me? Somebody would have been saying that, you know what? Let me go and look for some fine design and make sure all the materials are there. But they remember their God. Why is that? They got to understand that in, the, in order for God, to, for God to have that connection with them, there is forgiveness of sin. And it is on, based on the altar or that they have built, that they will take their sacrifices to that altar for God uh, to, to forgive them their sin. What does that mean? You are having a connection with the almighty God. I pray that may you find a place in your heart to worship the Lord the way you want to worship. Can I hear a louder amen? Why did they build, begin with the altar? Because our foundational need, if we want to draw near to God, is forgiveness of our sins. That is our foundational need. Amen. God designated the altar so that that one bringing the offering would be accepted before the Lord. So that that altar, that offering will be accepted. I pray that your prayers will be accepted before God. May the Lord accept your, your sacrifices. May the Lord accept your prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have to focus on the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? We are focusing on that because God is our leader. Jesus is our leader. We believe in him. He is the father. He is the son. Our focus must be on the cross. On the cross, he has given you victory. On the cross, he has given you power. On the cross, he has given you freedom. That is why you are not bound by any sickness. That is why you are not bound by any curse. No curse can ever come to you because Jesus has giving that to you on the cross are you hearing me no cross no crown are you hearing me so when you get there you understand that because of the cross of Jesus Christ remember what he has done for you on the cross does somebody remember what he has done for you say it again remember what he has done for you on the cross hallelujah remember that remember that remember that number three what are we doing now? now new beginnings with God must focus on the obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. We must obey the word of God. Amen. Obedience to the word of God. We have to obey the word of God. Now when you look at verse number, uh, Ezra chapter 3 verse number 2, look at what it said. How did they set up the altar? Because, let's look at it. How did they do that? They then stood up just at the son of Zodak and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, and his brethren, and built the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offering. And as it is written, where? It is written where? In the law of Moses, the man of God. They obeyed the decree 
that was written in there. They didn't do any shortcut. They believed and they, they obeyed the word of the Lord. When you obey God's word, you have freedom in your life. When you obey God's word, he begins to tailor your walk in the path of righteousness. When you obey God's word, things will fall in pleasant places for you. Are you hearing me? So your obedience to God is needed in this new beginning. God is telling you, you have to obey. Anytime the word of God, anytime you are called upon by the spirit of the living God, sometimes go and read your Bible. Look at what we learned this morning. Go and read your Bible. I mean, you have to daily sacrifice yourself. Obey. Reading the word of God renews your spirit every time. So tell somebody, obedience is very important. Obedience is very important. You have to understand that if you are not obeying, first of all, focus on the cross and obey the word of God. If you are not obeying the word of God, the Bible says, if you love me, you obey my commandment. Amen. The commandment of God are sure. If you love me, obey. If you love somebody and you cherish, you cherish somebody, you want to obey what they say. Amen. So if you love the Lord, you have to obey. Obedience is very important. Sometimes in your life, you want to do something and the Holy Spirit is telling you, don't do that. You got to obey the voice of God. Sometimes you want to go somewhere else and God is telling you, don't go where. You have to obey the voice of God. Sometimes the Lord is telling you, pray for somebody. Give to somebody. You have to obey the voice of God and obey the word of God. And that will help you. Amen. When it comes to how we should live as God's people, we must go to God's word and obey what he commands us to do. We must go to God's word and what? And do what he has commands us to do. Amen. And that's what's going to have. God's moral commandment do not adapt to the changing moral of standards in our life. That means that the God's moral we have, some people say, you know what? Because the world is doing it, I must follow the world. No, you, ye are of the world. By what? You are in the world. By what? not of the world. You are in the world but not of the world. That means that even though you are in the world you cannot practice what the world is doing. Because what you practice is your standard which is the word of God. The word of God is your model. The word of God is your standard. And I pray for you that you will obey that voice. I pray for you that you obey that voice. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 14. Look at what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14. 2 Corinthians, be ye not equally what? And equally yoked together with an unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with what? Unrighteousness. And what communion have light with darkness? That means that you cannot, as a Christian, you cannot live your life anyhow. You must live the life according to the precedent of the word of God. You cannot be equally yoked with an unbeliever. That's what the Bible is saying. That's why when you see an unbeliever doing something, you as a Christian must not sit down with them. Psalm 1 verse number 1. Look at what it says. Psalm 1 verse number 1 is going to tell you what you are supposed to do. Psalms 1 verse number 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Go ahead. The Bible says in verse number 2, look at what it says. That, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doeth he meditate day and night. Verse number 3. Day and night. Day and night. Verse number 3. Look at what it says. And he shall be like what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not, not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So you cannot say, I am a Christian only on Sunday. Huh? I'm watching out. I'm a Christian only on Sunday. But on the other days, pastor is not seeing me. God sees all of us everywhere. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord move to and fro, looking upon the evils and the, the good and the evils. So the Lord is looking at us. Amen. So don't only be Sunday Christian alone, but be Christian every time of your life every day of your life. You must obey the word of the Lord. Obedience is better than what? 
sacrifice. It's not because of what you are doing in the house of the Lord. It is your worship to the Lord. Amen. Number three. Number three. You have to also focus on this. Number three. Number three. Number three. You must also focus on... Is it number four? Oh, they are in spirit. Number, number three or number four? Number four. New beginning with God must also focus on building God's house. Building his house. He must focus on what? Building his house. Now let's go to Ezra. When you go to Ezra chapter 3 verse number 6 going downwards, look at what happened. Some of the things these people did when, when they, 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 they realized that they had to go back to Jerusalem and Judah and build a temple for the Lord. From that first day, the seventh month began. They do offer what? Burnt offering unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not what? Yet laid. Verse number seven. Look at what happened. And the Bible says this. He said, they gave money. Somebody said they gave money. Oh, say, say it loudly. Now, I want to ask a question. Do you know that the people that left Jerusalem, left, sorry, left the captivity in Babylon, went to Jerusalem, they were not working. Are you hearing me? They were not people that have substances and have were, were prosperous. Just like refugees. They left the camp of Babylon. They went to Jerusalem. But the Bible says, they gave money also unto what? The man, what? The masons. And then to the what? The carpenters. And what? And meat. And what? And drink. Go ahead. And oil. And unto them of what? Zidon. And to them of Tyre. And to bring what? Cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea of Joppa. According to the what? The grant that they had of Cyrus the king. The people that left Babylon had a devotion to build for the Lord. So you have to understand that building for God is also a new beginning in your life. Are you hearing me? You would have been thinking that somebody was going to give them food from somewhere else. But they are rather the people that were donating to that temple. They gave their money to the masons, to the carpenters. They were saying, you know what? If it is the Lord's house, we will build it. Why? Because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, where, where, where is he going? To the house of the Lord. If the house is not built, how can they worship there? If this house is not built, how can you worship here? Are you hearing me? So you have to understand that it is very important. What of the focus we must have in this new beginning is building the house of the Lord. Now, building the house of the Lord requires so many things. Number one, that one requires so many things. Building the house of God requires so many things. Building God's house requires courage to stand together against the hostile world. You must have the courage. That's somebody, you must have the courage. You must have the courage. If you want to build the house of God, you must have the courage. If you want to build the things of God, you must have the courage because there is an enemy that will always want to fight you. There is something that will always want to pull you. And then when that is pulling you, your attention is depleted. Your mind, your focus is not there. You are distracted. But I pray for you that you have a focused mind. I said, I pray for you that you have a focused mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God give you a focused mind. You must have the courage. So building the house of God required courage to stand. Worship in the house of the Lord required courage to stand. Coming to the house of the Lord to pray required courage to stand. You are standing against the walls of the enemy. That is why nobody will put fear on you. May your faith arise. I said, may your faith arise in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 12, verse number 4 to 5. Look at what it says. Luke chapter 12, verse number 4 to 5. Luke 12, 4 to 5. Luke 12, 4 to 5. And I said unto my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that, have no more that they can do. Are you hearing me? But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which have after he killed, have power to cast into the world, into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear that person. So sometimes you are afraid what people will say. 
you are afraid for people to call you. You are, are you the only person going to church? Are you the only Christian on, on the surface of the earth? Don't be afraid of those people. You are worshipping for God and you are building the house of God. God is proud about you. I say God is proud of you. Because you are the son of Jesus Christ. Keep on moving in him. Keep on flowing in him. Number two, building God's house requires giving our resources. It requires what? Giving our resources. Because the other day when we were here, I, I told you, the whole place was hot and everybody was sweating. And I saw everybody and something was eating me up. I said, ah, no. We must have our air condition moving on. We endured more than one month. The second month, the third month, we couldn't take it. So I told the owner of the building, that, you see, I am going to stop paying you rent if you don't give air condition to my people to put in this 90 degrees, 102 degrees. And then after some time, when they realized the money did not come, the next month they came to fix it. Are you hearing me? What is that? I'm saying that because of the resources we have, our finances we have. Now, when you talk about resources, they are in three stages. Your time, your talent, and your treasure. Say with me. Your time, your talent, and your treasure is important in the house of the Lord. Are you hearing me? So I said, no, we can't be paying you. We have the resources. We are paying you. And you can't pay. You cannot keep the air conditioning for us. No. And they had to do the thing. Now, the, everything you are pouring in in the house of the Lord and you are building God's heart for him shall go a long way for your reward. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Hallelujah. So building the house of God required giving our resources. Our resources of treasure. We need it. The people went there, when they had money, they gave it. That's why when you are asking to give something in the house of the Lord, it's not a sin. It's a blessing. That somebody is looking into somebody's eye and say, it's a blessing. Find somebody say, it's a blessing to give in the house of the Lord. Amen. The more you give, the more God gives unto you. So building the temple or the house of the Lord required what? Giving our resources. These people had just returned to the land which meant giving up their resources of income in Babylon and making four men trek. You know how long they walk from Babylon to Jerusalem? They say they trek for four months. Huh? They walk for four good months. Are you hearing me? And so I believe that they were sacrificing their energy, their time, because they know there is a new hope for them somewhere else. I pray for you. May you find hope in Jesus. I pray for you. May you find hope in Jesus. Ezra chapter 3 verse number 7. Look at what it says. Verse number 7. Look at what it said. Building God's house required money. Your willingness to give. Somebody say willingness to give. Your willingness to give is required. They gave money also to the masons. And to, what? to the carpenter. They give your willingness. It is in your willingness. You know how much, how, how much it is when people go out and say, you know what? I want to write a check to support the, 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 the assignment that are in the world that are not benefiting our children and our future and people are supporting it. How much more we as Christians in the house of the Lord, why can't we support the work of God? The enemy will always want to come in when you want to do for the Lord. They will stand in, but I pray for you. May the Lord give you an escape. I said, may God give you an escape in the name of Jesus. Number three, under that building, God's, building God's house required working in unity. Somebody say working in unity. Under godly leadership, working in unity. One of the things that the enemy wants to fight when it comes to Christian life is the unity and the bond of peace in the life of believers. As long as the enemy can get you to be divided against each other, he is happy. That is why we must be very quick and very smart to know that when disunity is coming, we have to stay strong and stand strong. Because in the, in the spirit of disunity, what happens is that you will never achieve anything. You have to allow God to give you that strength to live in unity with one man. Because when we are united, we have united front, we will only do something great for the Lord. And when you don't have united from something else happened in your life. And the Bible says that in verse number 3, chapter 3, verse number 1. Look at what it says. Chapter 3, verse number 1. Go to verse number 1 for me, please. He said what? And when the seventh month 
was come, the children of Israel were in what the city, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. They did what? They gathered themselves together as one man. To, they were united. They were together. People of God, I beg you in the name of God, don't allow this unity to be in your, in your heart. Are you hearing me? Don't allow this spirit of bitterness to, to spoil what God wants to do in your life. Because when you are bitter, that is what the enemy wants to get. When you are sad, he wants to concentrate on that and rob you off of the blessing that is in the word of the Lord. Just somewhere we will be together and we will build for the Lord. Hallelujah. We will be together and we will build for the Lord. And you are talking about how can we? Unity was essential because of the enemy outside that would shortly strengthen and shut down the work. We need the, the unity of God to build the God's house. You need the unity of the mind to be able to stand in the, in the place of prayer. You need that unity of the word. You need it. We have to be united. There's nothing wrong. If somebody step on you, what you can do is that, oh, brother D'Acusto or sister Shenderila. Are you hearing me? You just step on me. You know what? You, you, it will amaze you to know that D'Acusto doesn't even know he has stepped on you. Shandarilla doesn't even know that she has stepped on you. But the enemy will capitalize on that and drift your focus and your attention to only that. And you are hurting in spirit. And when you are hurt in spirit, what happens is that you begin to isolate yourself. And once you begin to isolate yourself, it begins to work on your mind. It will work on your mind. Even when you see the sister coming and you turn your eye, or the brother can you turn your eye, the enemy will say, that, ha ha, he's coming. You see, he, he, he refused to look into your face. So in this house, when you feel that something is not good, it is good for you to approach and say, oh sister or brother, I felt awkward. I felt this way. And that thing will be resolved once, once and for all. May you never hold bitterness in your heart. God wants you to grow in this new beginning. So we need that unity to forge ahead. We need that power of God to go ahead. Amen. Building God's house requires renewed emphasis on corporate worship. Renewed emphasis on what? Corporate worship. We got to renew our mind. Renew our spirit. Amen. When we come together, when we, we are worshiping together under corporate anointing, the power of God begins to flow. That is why I want to say to everybody, listen, the choir and the praise and worship team, they are doing a wonderful job. Amen. Do not come to the house of the Lord without dance or without a dance or without a song. We must have a renewed mind. We must have a renewed spirit. Are you hearing me? So it requires a renewed emphasis on corporate worship. Much could be. That, so we will be able to stand in. Now when you look at verse number 10 of Ezra, look at what happened. Verse number 10. I pray. If you don't know how to sing, start learning to sing. Because God, will give, God is going to give you a new song. The Bible says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with what? Oh, read with me. With what? With trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of our Asfa, with what? Simba, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of what? David, the king of Israel. May the Lord give you a song. I said, may the Lord give you a song. Psalm 34, verse number 1. I quoted that last Wednesday. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Are you hearing me? I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether you have the money or not, I will bless God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether you are paid your salary or not, I will bless God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether you have paid your rent or not, I will bless God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether you're, you have a backache or your eye problem, you will bless God. Listen, if you know how to praise God at all times, everything else will turn in your favor. When you speak defeat, defeat begins to control you. But when you speak praise, praise always opens the door for you. I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving. And I will enter into his court world with praise. Come on, it doesn't matter what you are going through. Put a praise on it. 
some of you must learn how to dance. Come on, forget about the complaints. Forget about the murmuring. Forget about, listen, it's a sin to complain before God. Do you know that from the beginning of January till now, look at, look at your life. Look at what God has done for you. Ah, you have a reason to praise God. Are you hearing me? You have a reason. Some people wake up in the morning and they fall dead. Some wake up and they have to carry them to emergency. If you want to know the goodness of the Lord in your life, visit the emergencies and see what is happening over there. They have to put tube in some people's mouth in order for them to eat. But because of the mercies of God, you are not consumed. Ah, God has done it for you. You have to keep on praising God. Father, I thank you. Maybe today you didn't have it. Maybe tomorrow you didn't have it. Keep praising God. He will bring it. If the birds of the air who doesn't work and they can eat, God can feed your house. I said the Lord can feed your house. So we need that corporate worship. When you, I said it last Sunday. When you come to the house of the Lord, learn to praise God. Don't be praising God and open one of your eyes like a Morocco lizard. And be watching. Great are you, Lord. Which one, which, which one is this one spying? Are you hearing me? Praise God from the bottom of your heart. You receive sad news. You tell yourself, sad news is not your portion. You receive any evil news in this man. Ah, it will not begin with your life. I prophesy to you, it will not begin with your life. There are some testimony you are waiting. They are coming and they are arriving because of you. In the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, it is coming your way. Say it like you may say, it is coming your way. There are people in your life that are not allowing you to rejoice and have your dominion. God will take them out of your way. Ah, I pray for you. May you have a renewed spirit of worship. Learn to worship the Lord. Learn to worship the Lord. Learn to praise God. There are some people, they, all they do is they talk about brokality. I don't know if that works in the dictionary, but it's my own brokality. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. It's my own dictionary word. Though. It's not there. If you look for it, you won't find it. Brokality. Ah, Google, you, Google will not give it to you. It's I'm broke. How things happen, I'm broke. Ah, you can't be broke if you're a child of God. I said you cannot be broke if you're a child of God. Even if you don't have food in your fridge, God will supply for you. Are you hearing me? There are people in other countries who don't have even common water to drink. But you are a blessing in the hands of God. And God has made all things new for you. Some people will go around saying, that, oh, it's because of my own job. It's because of my own title. It's not about title. It is by the mercy of God. It is by the grace of God. May you find that grace in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? Change your mentality. Change your perspective. Change how you think about what is happening around you. Are you hearing me? When your children come back from school and you see something that are not, lay hands on them and pray. Because they are your future president. Uh, I said they are your future generation president. God will use them mightily. Do you think that everything you are doing in this house is a waste? It's not a waste. God is taking you from one point to another point and everything will change for your favor. I am waiting for your testimony. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I'm waiting for your testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm waiting for that testimony. May that testimony happen in your life. May you stand tall and stand beautiful. Focus on the cross. Make up your mind to build for the house of God. Make up your mind to tell yourself that every day of your life, you will stand to have courage. You will have courage to stand every day. Do you know, fear is not good. Fear. Forget everything and run. That is fear. Forget everything and run. It's not good. You are not running anywhere. You will stay in the house of God. Are you hearing me? Fear will come upon you. And you are not able. Ah, I see some millionaires emerging. I see the power of wealth coming upon you. I see the anointing of God coming upon you. May the Lord open that door for you. It will come to pass. You have to believe it. That God is making a way for us. The other day I stood here and I told myself, I said, God told me that was on Saturday yesterday. We came for intercessory prayer. I said, tell the people they are doing very well. Beat your chest. I said, I'm doing very well. You are doing health wise. Financial wise, you are doing very well. I said, you are doing very well. 
even though Job chapter 8 verse number 7 even though thy beginning was small your latter end shall greatly increase you are doing very well though thy beginning was small yet the latter end now go to Haggai chapter 2 verse number 9 look at what it says Haggai 2 verse number 9 and I will close the sermon Haggai 2 verse number 9 look at what it says and this is what I'm going to declare to you whether you like it or not I will keep it to you as a pill you will take it home Ah, you will swallow it by force. Praise the name of the Lord. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. Now this is the peel coming. And in this place, I will give you peace, Say yes, the Lord of hosts. Say somebody, in this place, in this month, in this year, I receive peace in the name of Jesus. He said, in this place, I will give you peace. May the Lord grant you peace. Are you hearing me? When you sleep, may you sleep like a baby. If you have anything to do in your life, any project to do in your life, any assignment, anything that is becoming difficult, peace will prevail over that. I prophesied financial peace into your life. In the name of Jesus. I prophesied spiritual peace in your life. Ah! I declare in the name of Jesus that this is not your end. This is your new beginning. I said, this is your new beginning. May the Lord, I see debt cancellation. May the Lord cancel that debt in the name of Jesus Christ. It is coming. God will give it to you. You have to believe it. You have to walk in that dimension. Are you hearing me? Somebody called me yesterday and the person said, Pastor, you know, I have, I have worked and I have reached this end and I just feel like it's not the thing I want to do, so I want to give up. I said, no, you are not giving up. You will finish. As a matter of fact, I will fly and go there for your graduation. I said, you're not giving up. He said, Pastor, why? I said, because God has determined your end from the beginning. So the voice of the accuser cannot stop you from where you are going. If there is something you have started in your life, the Bible says, he that has started a good thing in your life shall surely bring it to pass. I see this house increasing. I see your home increasing. I see your destiny increasing. In Jesus' mighty name, shall we rise to our feet?